good morning. We have a nice bright sunny morning this morning. And we had a bit of a sunrise which you will see in a minute. Anyway, I did go into the back room as I had mentioned. And uh, I did take and I moved the deep freeze out. But things did not go as the way I thought they would as you're going to see in the rollback. Yeah, and then I came back to the model table here, which you're going to see in the rollback. And it's not a long, lengthy rollback. It just sort of, sort of shows how we got to this place right here. And, uh, yeah, I think we just may as well... Uh, well, now, now you've seen the sunrise, so you know that that's up. <laughs> and our, our, bird, our bird feeder is uh, only... Uh, I guess it's got about an inch and a half of seed, so we got to keep an eye on that. You know, I've got to bring you up to date. We can't talk about the rabbits anymore. I think in the comments yesterday, Allison was mentioning how uh, we're, you know, the, something about the rabbits, and I said, yeah, I'm still after the city of Winnipeg to find out, you know, what the official uh, word is on that. So I, right after I did the comment, I, I googled it and. Uh, Sure enough, the city of Winnipeg does not want us feeding the wildlife, which means rabbits. That's that's kind of too bad. I was uh, I was kind of looking forward to uh, feeding them this winter and helping them through another winter, but uh, uh, apparently uh, the 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 city does not want them to be helped through the winter because, uh, as I mentioned before, they're they're attracting predators, which are coyotes which are rather, you might say, rather troublesome, even though I don't think there's any record of a coyote attacking anybody here in Winnipeg, like a human. But on the other hand, it, it could happen. I mean, uh, s uh, small animals, they'll attack small animals, which means they'll, you, they might attack small children. Uh, and in this area, there's a lot of small children. This is, this is a very popular area uh, for for families, uh, you you probably don't know it, but just just across the street. In fact, I'm I'm looking at the entrance to it right now. There's a park. I, I live in a in a bay. I don't know if you if you've ever Googled my my uh, where I live here, but if you look down on it on the Google map, you'll see that that this crescent that I live on, it 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 goes around a park, a nice little park. It's probably a, probably a couple of acres or so and you know there's swings and slides and the sandbox and all all the usual park stuff so this is a real nice area for for young families with with little kids and we don't need coyotes which means that we, well i guess we can't have the rabbits uh you know it's, it's just the way it goes anyway uh let's uh get on here and we'll roll back and see how it is we got to where we are and then we'll continue on well the deep freeze is out it was standing right here uh, okay uh, that was the main thing. It it actually went out pretty pretty easily. I don't know. It, it didn't have casters on the bottom, but it must have had some sort of rounded uh, feet of some kind that slid quite easily on the carpet. I didn't even have to take the stuff out of it that was in it. Mind you, there wasn't very much anyway. I think there's three pieces of pizza and uh, some other stuff. Some bagged bananas. <laughs> Okay, uh, the thing of it is, uh, there's, there's a lot of other stuff in here. I'll just uh, swing you around. Pardon my hand. Okay, so there's other stuff here that I've got to get rid of. Uh, my wife's wheelchair, which I'll probably be needing soon. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the uh, winter tires for the car, which I'll be needing soon. <laughs> okay, enough uh, silliness here. 
Yeah, uh, I could probably find room to put these. Some of this stuff could go in the basement. For instance, I don't need to keep uh, an empty cardboard box. But, uh, you know, I'll tell you. I'm beginning to wonder if maybe this is an old man's folly, you know. Uh, I, I was thinking of putting a, a table there, and a table there, and a table behind me along the wall. Uh, 30 inches by 72 inches. And uh, they weren't that expensive. They would have folding legs and so on. And, and I could probably do it for under three hundred dollars altogether including taxes and then I could build my whatever on here that I wanted to do in, at the same time as the Rodney but uh, I think it might be an old man's folly I think that I might be sort of biting off more than I can chew not only would I have the expense uh, it just might not be a good idea. I'm going to think about it a little bit more. In the meantime, being as that the deep freeze is so easy to move, I think I'm going to just slide it back in here and get it out of my computer room. Well, it was a nice thought. It was a nice thought. very careful that I don't twist my knee. Just sort of belly bunt this thing into place. It's humming. <laughs> okay, we're back to where we was. And I'm still interested in getting the Yamato. I didn't need this room to get the Yamato. Yep, I do not need that back room to get the Yamato. Okay. Kind of glad I've got that decision made. I've been thinking about doing that for about a year. Um, on the other hand, it might be able to change my mind tomorrow. Who knows? Okay, you know, I'm not going to do the black brass. I'm going to get, try and just set this off to the side here a little bit. I don't know if you can see it from your perspective, but there's a little little mark right there where the top of this is supposed to go. And I think what I'll, what I'll do is try and have it so that the that the bottom here is not, you know, there's lots of clearance. All right, and we'll probably use uh, a little little dab of uh, CA thin here and here, and just let it sit in it. I don't know if I should try and, you know, I'm probably going to end up breaking this this ladder off because I'm going to forget and I'm going to grab onto it. On the other hand, maybe I'll be careful. We'll see what happens. Okay, let's get set up with the CA glue. Come on. There we go. Don't want to take too long because this will start to try to cure. Okay, I may not look like it from your perspective, but that's that's pretty straight up and down. Uh, it'd probably be safer if I was to put it further back this way, but I don't think that's where it's supposed to go. Now, the funny thing of it is, you climb up that ladder, and then what do you do? There's no little doorway. This portal's away off to the side. 
unless there's going to be something else on the deck that we're, that's going to make you know it'll make sense later. Okay, these are going to be the side markers for the running lights, and as you can see, they're mirror image to each other. But I'm pretty sure that I can't get them mixed up. I'd have to put them on upside down, uh, and I know I know how they're supposed to look. So I've already nipped off this one, and and this one. So we'll just get the others now. When I was uh, nipping off the ladder, interestingly enough, I got too close to the one of the uh, rungs, and I was uh, I, I actually shaved a little bit of the rung off, probably a <laughs> thousands of a millimeter, just a little sliver of a thing. But that's the way it goes. Okay, did I get this one? No, I don't think I did. I was watching Steve in the model shed uh, cut some photo etch, very small, delicate photo etch, and he just goes pop, 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 and he was using his his thumbnail uh, to to bend the uh, little little pieces on. I thought that was kind of unique. Okay, are we loose here? Yeah, I think we're loose. Okay, here we go. Okay, now there is a plastic part that goes with this H34, and it, it'll fit in after we get these folded up. We have to make three folds on each one of these. And uh, we're probably going to leave that for tomorrow now. we got 8.36 in the evening. <clears throat> I can tell my voice is even starting to get tired here. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, we'll see you in the morning. Okay, it is morning. And I think we'll just do one of these on camera. And we've got to bend, as I mentioned, at three places. And we got the folding lines up already. So, uh, uh, I think possibly what we'll do is we'll stick this in. Try to think of which, which will be the best way to go on this. Um, would it be a case of... Uh, I, th I think probably like this. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, stick on the macro lens and we'll just come right in and uh, have a nice close, close look here. Okay, I'm looking straight down on this now and uh, I'm thinking that possibly I should move it in just a little bit more here. Um, I don't want it in too far because then when I fold this part up, it, it bumps, it bumps onto the nose of the, uh, I keep mentioning this, I know, but I, just in case there's somebody watching this for the first time. So you, you, I can't have it too far in. I mean, the, the idea is, you know, some people will say, well, would you put, put the blade of your razor or whatever in the crack and then just move it right in until the, you know, as far as it'll go. But I find that if I do that, it's too far in. So I've got to sort of eyeball it here. And, uh, I'm just gonna fold it like this. Okay, and I'm just sort of eyeballing it as to when I get it at 90 degrees, which is about there. Now, I, I know that a person could probably use uh, tweezers and, and do this a lot faster but then you're not going to have the oh this isn't going to work this is not going to work because uh, when I try to fold it up you can see what's going to happen right well maybe we can do this one 
you know I have never used the the back side of, of this thing on the other side of this thing I'll I'll show you what I'm talking about I'm just trying to get it in here I might have a little bit too far in but then I'm not going to be able to come all the way up anyway so oh yeah I came up pretty much to 90 degrees all right Now we are not going to be able to fold this one, but but let's just swing this thing around. Maybe I could just leave everything adjusted the way it is because it's it's in focus here. So what you do is you raise this all the way up and try and be careful not to uh, a little bit more here, a little bit more. Okay, Andy has designed this thing so it's. You know, it, it's very much like a one that you would buy. Okay, so it's it's got these fingers, and I'm just wondering if maybe is this going to work? This is one of the. Trying to check the monitor, see if I've got it in the view, field of view here. Okay, hold it like that. Now maybe it should be in a little bit further. We'll see what's going to happen here. Whoops, I don't have it tight, very tight, do I? Just let me loosen it up. Okay. And could be I should have it more to the right. Yeah, it's not. I think this is almost going to make it. No, I can tell it's binding. Okay, well, well, we'll just do it the other way then. We'll do it the simple way. So to hold it down with uh, okay now now right in here we have to put a little plastic part so let's find that okay I've done the second one and all I did was I held it in tweezers just like you see here and then I bent the little flaps over and I probably did the whole thing in about 10-15 seconds. Um, for something like this you don't, you don't need a, a photo etch bender. It, it actually goes a lot faster. Just grab it with the tweezers and bend it. Or, or like I saw Steve doing he on a little part, he put it up against his thumbnail and then he just sort of rolled it over. That, that was cool. <laughs> um, however, there are some some things that uh, you pretty much got to have a, a photo etch bender. Or as I started out uh, three four years ago, uh, I made a, a bender out of a out of a hinge. You've got to have something that'll hold it down so that you can bend it right at the folding line. Uh, some some of the pieces I find. Uh, and I'm not an experienced person. I'm not trying to teach you how to how to do this. All I'm doing is telling you what has happened to me. And I find that some photo etch bends easy, like this, and some photo etch, no matter how hard you try to do it, at least me, uh, it just doesn't go right, and you end up with some sort of a twisted mess. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, all right, let's let's continue on here and, and find our little plastic pieces that have to go in here. Okay. Wish I had a dollar for every time I said okay. H34.
Okay. Now, you can see here that after we get the the flashing trimmed off this thing and try and get it into some sort of round there is a little tiny you might call it almost a peg and I believe that peg has to go through that hole oops yeah it has to go through the hole that is in that piece of photo etch that we just bent um, so this is actually has three stages to it three diameters this diameter this diameter and then the little tiny peg that's right on the end um, yeah I don't know if we're going to be able to get it like that but uh, and it's probably going to be too small to see but it was nice of Trumpeter to you know, to go to the effort of trying to do the detail. Okay, I realize that we have done this micro crystal clear thing, you might say, to death. <laughs> uh, yeah, we beat it to death. But you remember uh, yesterday, in yesterday's episode, we uh, uh, made a porthole <laughs> in the top of the turret. And I just wanted to show you how it came out. It, it looks very glass-like. Now you'll notice on the left side of the porthole is a where it sort of overflowed, you might say. Now, military modeler Paul said he's going to be doing his Rodney, or rather his Nelson uh, portholes with this stuff. And he was mentioning that he uses a, a damp Q-tip to clean up afterwards, and I'm hoping he's going to be doing some uh, uh, a demonstration of how he does it and how it comes out. I can I can imagine that if a person was to have taken like uh, uh, where is it here now one of Tennessee Jim's Q-tips and sort of rubbed along the edge there a person possibly could have cleaned that up um, anyway let's let's take a look at the uh, the other two lights that we painted with the flat aluminum the uh, FX. 16. Okay, now we'll take a look at the old Bismarck searchlight. I might want to recompose here a little bit. Maybe I can get a little bit sharper. At arm's length, that actually looks really good. Well, I'm going to close today's episode off. I realize that in about one minute it's going to be this afternoon. And I do have time that I could probably do a little bit more, but there are other things that I'd like to do today. So, uh, thanks for watching everybody. All being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow. Now, how do I end this? How do I get out of here?